Well, welcome to another Acoustic Alternatives uh, podcast being done from Grove Studios in Ypsilanti, a very cool rentable space that my guest has uh, checked out online. She's uh, already impressed and might have to come and take advantage of the student discount we just heard. My guest on the Acoustic Alternatives this week is my friend Allison Albrecht. Welcome back, Allison. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It is so good to see you, my friend. It's yeah. been it's been about a year. It's been about a year. Yeah, we were just saying that. Um, yeah, we saw that a year ago was right. when I last came into studio. It's a radio thing, and we're not doing the radio thing anymore. But uh, we do have this excellent uh, location. If you are a podcaster and you're looking for a place to rent to do your podcast, I highly recommend Grove Studios. If you're a musician, absolutely, there's some really interesting spaces to rent, different sizes, a uh, deluxe room. If you can read all about it, check out the Grove Studios webpage and uh, get involved. If you're looking for space it is a really cool i'm going to show allison when we can one of the rooms was occupied when we got here but uh, i want to show her the, the deluxe studio a little bit later on but uh what, what kind of review i mean if people have heard me interview you in the past this will be a review <laughs> for them but uh, it it's it's pretty rare for me to say that somebody caught my attention by singing the national anthem yes. and i know i've said that every time but it's not that common for me to write down the name of the person singing the national anthem and go boy i really should look into this and watching a tiger game when she was just 15 yeah I got to see her perform and uh, stole the name off the scoreboard and reached out and said, hey, do you have a CD? And Allison said, yes, I do. Sent me first. the CD. Yep. It was really good. Very impressed. Started playing some of the songs on the radio. Hey, you want to come on my show sometime? Sure. And I find out while I'm doing my research or maybe even during the interview that you're in 10th grade. Oh, my God. <laughs> you're in 10th grade and you've got your first CD out and you come like, come on, yeah. seriously. So I'm just uh, you're a superhuman being. And I'm, I'm glad that we connected back then. And I'm loving to watch uh, as your career develops and the songs develop and everything is coming along very nicely. <laughs> well, and I've just been so grateful for just like all your support even continued across the years. It's just been so wonderful. So. If yeah. I if I believe in somebody, they know. And I hope that you know I believe in you. Yes, absolutely. Let's give people an example of why I believe in you. It's your songwriting and your singing. Yes. Both. What would you like to start with? Um, I'm going to start with um, the latest single that I just released over the summer. Cool. Um, and it's called Right Thing, Wrong Time. And the right thing to do now while you're singing is remove the mask. Yes. Here's Alison yes, Albrecht yes, yes. on Acoustic Alternatives. <laughs> Don't overthink it, but there's madness in my mind It's the right kind of thing at the wrong time Don't overthink it, let it happen undefined It's the right kind of thing at the wrong time We linger in the starlight but we should be fast asleep No rules to play by No promises to keep I bite my lip and Feel the air brush my skin It's warm in July Let the heat begin Black dress, black sky My eyes meet your eyes My heart beats out of my chest So don't overthink it, but there's madness in my mind It's the right kind of thing at the wrong time So don't overthink it, let it happen undefined It's the right kind of thing at the wrong time Time, time, time Four walls knocked down Can you finally feel the wind? I ride it for a little bit Goes nowhere that I've been You whisper secrets Brush hair from my face We'd be locked down But we're stuck here in this place Oh, dark air, dark mind Not now, I know why Let's just soak up this Space. So don't overthink it, but this madness in my mind It's the right kind of thing at the wrong time So don't overthink it, let it happen undefined It's the right kind of thing at the wrong time Time, time, time Oh, oh, oh. 
long This could erupt any second But you're always on my mind You're the right kind of thing at the wrong time Though I should learn my lesson This is nothing like a crime You're the right kind of thing at the wrong time Man, is that good? That's <laughs> so good. Yeah. Alison Albrecht on Acoustic Alternative is right thing, wrong time. The latest single from last summer and uh, yeah. the mask uh, off made that such a powerful blue that you're blowing, <laughs> blowing me out of here, which is great. I love it. Um, before we back up and, and talk about the past, let's talk about that song a little bit. What, yeah. what inspired that that particular can you talk about it if, if it's not too emotional because yeah i mean i can you know make my own conclusions about what the song might be about but well i, I actually wrote it um right kind of after quarantine had started and i was actually taking a production class online through berkeley um i found myself um with a summer that i had kind of like i had a job i had i was gonna go abroad i was kind of i don't know just like everyone we all had they had plans. Um, plans. Yeah. And they kind of, and obviously everything got turned upside down, but I was so fortunate that I was able to take that production class. And it was um, music production fundamentals for songwriters. And I thought that song, I loved kind of the upbeat energy of it, thought it could be produced in a really fun way. And I just kind of wrote it about this, um, I don't know, this phase of my life being in college and um, navigating different relationships. And yeah. It could just as easily be about finding the right person, but at the wrong time. Like you found the right person, but you're already engaged. It's otherwise engaged with somebody else. And ooh, yikes. So Well, and I like, that's one thing I love about um, music. Music <laughs> is it's everyone I think has a different kind of take on it. So um, yeah, for sure. That's, that's the song. Another way to look at it. Well, there we go. That's the latest single from Allison. Let's take a little journey backwards, though. Yes. From the young music fan that you were to picking up guitar. Tell me about young Allison discovering Gosh. a love of music and a guitar. I think I've just always loved music. Like, I just, I don't know why, but I think I've just always had this sort of fire in me to, to pursue it. I um, got my first guitar when I was in third grade for my ninth birthday. And actually, my 21st birthday is in three weeks. So hey. um, that was... I think 12 years ago, um, I got my first guitar and um, played every open mic in the area. My parents drove me to Caribou Coffee every single week <laughs> so that I could sing Taylor Swift covers for the other <laughs> Caribou Coffee patrons. I performed at um, Broughton Music Center a lot in Northville and um, just performed pretty much everywhere I could and loved. And I, I mean, I tried to write, you know, when I was young, but um really started writing music around like 11 or 12 um and yeah everybody does don't they <laughs> yeah well no. i um, no they don't i begged my parents to um take me to nashville and th we went on thanksgiving break and oh. i performed at the bluebird and the commodore what? and um saw that scene of writers rounds and i was convinced that um, that was what I wanted to do. So we went, we did a couple more Nashville trips after that. And that's kind of when I started to realize I wanted to be more plugged in, in the Metro Detroit niche. Cause I had, um, booked a couple gigs. Um, I had, was, this was, I was in like, you know, sixth or seventh grade and I, Again, was, normal stuff. I was just starting to book gigs in our area. And I was like, you know, before I, want to, you know, before you can tap in anywhere else, I really wanted to invest in, in being a performer in Metro Detroit. So, um, I started booking more gigs, more festivals and, um, have been doing that ever since. So that's kind of how I, um, how I started was I loved those writers rounds and I, um, really hooked on to, um, people sharing stories. And I think that's, if you've ever been to a writer's round type of setting, yeah. that's like the big takeaway. So. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine what 11 year old Allison was writing about. I mean, I was writing poems that were songs in my head. Yeah. I don't play music, but I was writing stuff at probably 13 yes. just to get my emotions out and to deal with, you know, well, it's such heartbreak. a wonderful outlet. Yeah, it is. I was but, writing about like a lot of like friendship dynamics and a lot about just kind of like, I mean, a lot of the songs I don't like play anymore. Yeah, <laughs> like even remember there's videos, but um, yeah, just a lot about friendships and um <laughs> kind of coming of age type of stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> It'd be interesting to hear some of those sometime, not in this forum, maybe another day. And <laughs> yes. you and I are just hanging out with your Absolutely. guitar. If that ever happens. 
Um, so you progressed nicely. You got to write more songs. You're obviously that, that most, if that's, if that's one of your newest songs, you've yeah. written some since then. I know that, but I can, I can hear the maturity in your writing in that song. It sounds, I mean, it really sounds radio ready to me, quite honestly. Thank you. It has a quality that matches people that are already written. Like, I mean, I don't know if the Lord is an influence at all, but there's something, oh, yeah, there's absolutely. a little bit of her in that one. I can hear yeah. something, but anyway, um, what would you say? I, I, I'm going to say that I can guess what the turning point for your career kind of starting to go in an upward direction was. But would you say it was the 2014 Super State Fair Superstar Contest? Would that be a major turning point, or was there something before that? No, I would say that was a big turning point. Up until that point, I was booking gigs. I was playing. Um, you know, I was just starting to play some of the festivals. Um, but after I won that competition, I mean, that was when I really got. Um, such strong mentorship from just amazing uh, mentors like we talked, like Chuck Alcazian, Nadira Mawale, Nancy Ferris, who I really love and adore. I love and adore all of them. Um, just such amazing mentorship and guidance about how, if I really wanted to pursue it, here were kind of the tools that um, I would need. And that's when I, you know, produced my first EP or, you know, worked on my first EP yeah. and finally had a product that I could give to festivals and booking agents and say, you know, this is my portfolio basically. Yeah. And um, I mean, that was huge to have that composition of originals and that one cover, the Stevie Nicks cover, which is honestly my most streamed song on Spotify <laughs> even now. And, it's a great version of Edge of 17. If you haven't heard it, check it out. <laughs> Thank you. I love, I mean, and I love the song and <clears throat> um, yeah. So that was definitely a huge turning point. Cause then from there I had, um, I had music to, to, you know, put out and then kind of built upon that foundation, like going forward. So it's yeah. like a resume. You, you built your resume. Absolutely. With, with that. <laughs> yes. that's, that's pretty awesome. And I think you met Jill Jack around that same time too. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, the year after you won that, you opened for her at the Ark or was somewhere right yes. around there. You opened for her at the Ark. Well, I remember I met Jill um, in the, there was a thing called the Michigan Mega Jam that they did for um, a good chunk of years yeah. where they took a bunch of um, Michigan artists and we played on, labor day all together and jill was there and i'd actually been to jill's shows as a young kid because my parents had been following jill when they um they moved to chicago for some time and moved back to michigan and started seeing her around town and actually were like big fans and supporters of her and so when i got to meet her in person it was like i was like oh my gosh jill i've seen you play at the zoo <laughs> and the library pub and like all these yeah. places and um she's been such such an incredible mentor to me even most recently actually she's just um just someone i really look up to and admire so yeah if she's watching jill i called you today we, we almost oh spoke she gosh. called me back when i couldn't answer so yeah, I, I haven't talked to her in a while but so wonderful so she's a good human for sure yes so you also are <laughs> beyond being a fantastic musician and songwriter you're also a really super intelligent human being who happens to love science and does that ever make it into your lyrics like like it doesn't seem like well, that's easy to write about, but I know <laughs> not, a few science-y songs. Not particularly, but I will say, though, I what I've kind of um, focused on studying is neurobiology, but like mostly neuropsychology. So um, a lot of, and now I'm taking a lot more social work classes. So I would say that is directly applicable to music. Um, a lot of the classes that I've been taking are centered around um, behavior and also um social justice. And I think that is so relevant to music. So I will say, no, I'm not writing songs about like I have a midterm on Tuesday in a class called the developing brain. Yeah. I will not be writing about any of those topics, Okay, but, um, but I just think the overall study of um, humans and how we behave and the um, systems we exist within studying that in a, um, in the university setting, I think has just enhanced my overall um, way, my overall depth of writing, I think in general. Very good. Well, we're going to talk more about school a little bit later, but I'd like to hear another song. What would yes. you like to do next? Well, um, this is actually one of the, I wanted to play some new stuff. Yeah, I know please. Just, um, yeah, this is a song that I wrote actually with my brother. It was the first one that we had kind of, well, maybe the second one we had kind of written together. And I wrote this one in August, my most recent. This is Exhale Peace. To 
Do you really wanna do that? Woven deep inside, all the signs red as blood. Though I pass them as I go. Would you really go through that? Would you take the dive? I'll arrive between two roads. I stumble as I go. Headlights shine into the fog. The lines will lead when I am lost. Empty passenger side beside me. Knuckles wipe and smile. As my heart beats, melted colors grace the clouds. My intuition roaring loud, run into the chaos around me, and finally I exhale peace. Would you really want to do that, Aston? Again and rebuild what felt like home. Convicted, I go. I post, not holding back anything. Water and eyes are glistening. High stakes, they stare right back at me. Trade my security. Headlights shine into the fog. The lines will lead when I am lost. Empty passenger side beside me. Knuckles wipe and smile as my heart beats. Melted colors grace the clouds. My Intuition roaring loud, run into the chaos around me. Finally, I exhale peace. I pulse, not holding back anything. Watering eyes are listening. High stakes, they stare right back at me. Trade my security for where I want to be. And finally, I exhale. There's some songwriters in town that probably wish they had written that song first. That's so good. Thank Excel you Peace, so much. Alison Albrecht, the new music from uh, the forthcoming EP. I'm throwing that out there. I have no idea. Are you yeah. doing a forthcoming EP? Are you getting in the studio soon? Well, I actually do have um, a single release announcement, actually, Ooh. for today. Um, not that song, but the song that I'll <sighs> actually be playing next. Oh. Um, we're releasing on March 12th. So nice. just three short weeks. So, cool. Um, yeah, we actually have um, a studio out of my house, and I've been recording um, with my brother. So it's been great to kind of have that, um, to be able to, whenever we kind of have a creative idea or just want to get something down, we, um, yeah, we have that space. So so Chuck great. is out of the mix now? Sorry, Chuck. No, Doing Chuck is so, what, <laughs> Chuck is wonderful, and he does what we can never do. Like, truly, um, he he's such a ge creative genius um the pro of doing it from home is with covid um yeah. you know we it's a lot harder to get into the studio and um it also is just kind of a great outlet for me and me and my brother to do together so um that's the pro of that hopefully i'll be able to go into a you know another studio at some point but um for now it's it's been great to be able to do it from home so your brother's in your quarantine anyway right so yes. he is yes you're we allowed were, to see him yes unmasked. we've been together yes absolutely <laughs> for sure how long has he been playing music he actually has he took bass lessons when he was a kid and has always kind of been musically inclined but he took up production about um gosh, maybe three years ago, and um, just kind of acquired all the gear for Christmas and birthdays, and 
I mean, he is just one of the most talented people that I know. He could spend all day just in his room um, tweaking songs. He's trained his ears to hear frequencies I could never hear. It's like he truly, um, he's a lot more technical than I am. And I, we both have, obviously we're siblings, but both my parents are engineers and he definitely, I think, has the engineer their brain. brain. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he just brings to the table so much that um, has just been such an asset to, to working together. So, yeah. I don't know your brother's name. Older brother? His name's Andrew. He's younger. He, um, so I turned 21 in three weeks. He turns 18 in three weeks. Oh so goodness. we're three years apart. Wow. Well, Andrew, thanks for uh, keeping an eye on Allison and keep her, <laughs> keep her, keeping her on the track of making music at home. So I want to think about one of my favorite moments since I've known you. It was when you posted the video of you watching yourself or listening to yourself yes. on the radio and you posted the video, reposted it, I think, when it was kind of on its anniversary. And it made me realize that what I was doing was having an impact. And you probably didn't intend for that to happen. You were just sharing a moment in your life that was important to you. But it was really important to me to know that I was doing that for somebody else. It's still one of my favorite moments. Gosh, and, it was so meaningful in my life just... I remember we knew you like we knew what time it was going to go on the radio and we had all my family like my mom, dad and brother we all got in the car and we um lived I grew up in Novi but um now we live out of the 1071 radius so we had to um like drive to get in radius yeah. so we all like got in the car and um we blasted the song and I just remember like my jaw dropped I was like oh my god and I think I was 15 or 16 and just like what a meaningful moment in my life and career it was so cool so i think you said that was a song you'd written on the floor of your bedroom and just yeah like, gosh good. that's the only song that i play that i wrote as a i think i wrote that song in the eighth grade oh, <laughs> and it's, i still play it. it's uh, my song not alone cool. and uh yeah i wrote it on the floor of my room in middle school but um, it's still one of my, actually one of my favorite originals, like to this day. What's been one of your biggest deals besides that, like playing on stage? Uh, what was, what's been a big like moment? Oh my, there's so many. Opening slot, um, a headlining slot. Well, opening for Jill was huge. I also, um, I think national anthem for the, for the Tigers was, was big. I also, when I was younger, I opened for Steve Miller. That was like insane. Yeah. Um, but I think some of my favorite shows uh, most recently have been at 20 front in oh, yeah. um, Lake Orion, just because those shows you really get to connect with the audience and tell stories and they really want to hear um, the stories behind the lyrics and just everyone, especially like I love one of my favorite parts about performing. What I miss so much is talking with everyone. After, like I will, I love to meet like everyone or as many people <laughs> after, because I just, I love getting it's to important. talk with everyone. So um, at 20 front, they so foster that. And like everyone um, is so kind. I mean, everywhere, everyone is so kind, but um, especially at 20 front, it's just a great community over there. Those listening room environments really are conducive for a con conversation afterwards. Absolutely. And this, this is the reason why you make a CD because you have something to sell them that they can sign. And I tell this to a lot of the young musicians. Um, it's important to have something to remember you by. If they're coming to see you as an opening act, for instance, they're not going to remember who you are unless they have something to take home. If they're impressed, they might want to have something. Well, I got to remember to look her up when I get home. And then of course they don't, right? For sure. For so sure. there is, there is something to be said about physical product, even in 2021. I know we're not doing any shows, but you know, it still yeah. could be a, a, an impactful thing for a musician. So I hope that that continues for you. Maybe you actually put your next thing out as a physical. Maybe you don't. I guess it depends on when it comes out. Maybe you wait till you can actually play the songs in front of people instead of online. For sure. No sense in putting a CD out when nobody's at a show, but I get it. Full-time college student. How are you making music? How were you finding time to do that? That's such a great question. Well, I think that's been one of my goals has just been, for me, it's just as important as, um, as everything else. Um, my ultimate goal is to, um, try to combine music and, um, I'm really passionate about like mental health advocacy and, um, I'm considering trying to pursue, I know I'm not a hundred percent sure, so please don't quote me on no, this, no but, um, I'm trying to pursue social work. So trying to think about, um, how to incorporate like music and social change. So, um, 
for me, music is just as integral as everything else that I'm studying and doing. So um, what I've been doing has been these live streams on on Sunday, um, which have been great. I did them um, six weeks in a row. I took um, a couple weeks off. Yeah, but, you're um, but you're, not, you're not getting paid. You may as well. <laughs> but they've been so great because I found myself throughout the week trying to learn new covers and take into feedback of what other people are wanting me to perform. And, you know, it's inspired me to write some more. So just kind of having that space um, I just do it for an hour on Sundays, but it honestly has really set up my week in a way where like it's it's revolved around just kind of growing and improving because that's what I miss a lot about doing shows, um, especially at like, I don't know, more of like a restaurant setting or settings where it's a little bit more laid back. You can try out so much new material. So sure. that's kind of what I like to do at those shows. I'm glad you're doing them. Yeah, thanks. During classes where you're Focusing on your studies, do you ever have a great line that pops into your head and you have to stop and go, I better write that down before I forget it? <laughs> well, I, you know, that actually used to happen to me in high school a little bit. Now it's, um, well, now everything's from home. So yeah. I feel like. But well, you've been in school when it wasn't from home. That's true. That is true. Um, I'm a big journaler. That's like one of my greatest outlets. So mm-hmm. I think for me, um, even if it's not like a poetic line, sometimes you just have something that you just can't get out of your brain um, and you're in a meeting or you're in class or something. And so for me, um, even if it doesn't come out as poetry, um, sometimes like I have my journal on me at 24 seven and I just, you have to write down ideas. So absolutely ideas. It's good. Keeps the, keeps the music flowing. Yeah, for sure. So when we spoke about a year ago, you told me you were a neuroscience and psychology major and a performing arts management and entrepreneur minor. Has that changed or is that still the same No, good. That's good. took notes. um, I actually added a minor, um, which is... (laughs) Because you're not busy enough. Community action and social change. Oh, my goodness. Um, But my major, it's neuroscience and psychology combined. So it's technically biopsychology, cognition, and neuroscience. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You're too much sometimes, you know that? (laughs) Uh, is there anybody in your music oriented classes that I should be keeping an ear out for that you've been introduced to from class? Well, I just started getting, there's so many like U of M performers that I'm just starting to get acquainted with. So, um, I definitely, next time I talk to you, we'll have more recommendations. Um, right now I know Ethan Matt, um, there's a couple, there's a lot of people up there. I also knew a lot of the musical theater people so now i'm kind of more in um in uh indie music classes so check back with me in a couple months for well, sure you and i have similar tastes that's why i was asking yeah if you, yeah like, oh you got to check out so if you come across an artist that's one of your peers gosh i absolutely will make sure you turn me on to them yeah uh if you decide to okay we, we discussed this before too but so you're on a path to obviously get a degree in something kind of major that isn't your love of music. So you have something to fall back on if the music thing doesn't work out, or is it your primary, is it your primary goal to become a psychologist? I don't know. Is that- um, well, no, now I, I think at the start of college, I was doing music on the side, but I wasn't taking any music classes. And um, I'm actually like, that was really hard, but I'm glad I did it because it made me realize that like, giving up music wasn't an option. Um, I, it's here, right? Yeah. I just think I have, I, I have to have a creative career. Like I've just decided that that's like what has to happen. So um, instead of trying to give up one or the other, I'm less like I'm now trying to combine the two basically. And like I mentioned, trying to um, use music as a way to, give others self-agency and a way to express themselves. So I'd like to continue being an artist myself and and do that full time after I graduate, quite honestly, um, and really pursue music. But I also think I feel so driven to use some of these other things that I that I love, like working with people, community organizing work. Um, I've done some nonprofit work, um, you know, over the past couple of years. And so Um, I would love to try to combine music and advocacy work. So I hope you can. Yeah. So tell me more about this new single that's coming out. March 12th, you said? March 12th. So um, it's actually the day after my my birthday. Sorry, I'm talking about my birthday so much. It's okay. It's a big deal. I know it's so annoying. No, it's a big deal. um, (laughs) 21 this year. That's a big deal. I'll take you out for a drink if I could. um, Yeah, right. Um, Mm. But... This song I I wrote, this was like, I think the first song I wrote with my brother, which is really cute. Oh. Um, he, this was the first song, actually, um, 
where he wrote the instrumental first and he was like, Hey, I made this. Would you write to it? And I was like, I, we'd never done that. Cause in the past I had just, we'd taken the songs that I'd already written and then we kind of, you know, put them to put them to production. Mm -hmm. But, um, I thought his instrumental rocked and, um, we were able to write to it. So this is a song it's called I say, and, uh, we can talk about it a little bit after too, but it's just about, um, finding confidence and, um, just kind of coming into your own, which I feel like has been one of my goals of the last year or two. So yeah, believe it or not, I need help with that too. Even at my age, it's, it's tough, but I, you know, I think writing about it, um, honestly has helped me remember it. Right. Cause on the days when it's hard, it's like, Oh yeah, but you've got this, like, uh, it's a great reminder. It's like, it's a reminder of, um, not to let yourself, not to get yourself down, um, and not be your, um, you know, like just remember how, how you're, how much you're worth. Right. Because it's so easy. I think, especially when times are tough, this has been a really, really tough year. Really? Um, <laughs> God, <laughs> sorry, sarcasm. No, I know it's been extremely difficult and there's so many trying times, um, if I could only share, but I can't, <laughs> but, but just to remember that, like, um, you have, you have the tools to, um, I mean, it sounds so cheesy, but like, basically you are equipped with the tools to like make the change you want to see. And that's kind of what the song's about. So, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> White noise and whispers around me follow everywhere I go. Echoes off of buildings and town and sticks like a shadow. Opinions, questions, concerns from the crowd in the gallery. This is the right call, but easy wasn't guaranteed. The sun shines through the pouring rain Wouldn't have it any other way Mascara runs right down my face Wouldn't change the ending High into a chaos confidently Myself to blame The sun shines through the pouring rain Time I say, silence the voices, chin up, look into the mirror. Lock eyes with the face, and finally the fog begins to clear. Biting my nails down, but alone, nowhere to hide. I breathe the same air with a fresh new the sun shines through the pouring rain Wouldn't have it any other way Mascara runs right down my face Wouldn't change the ending High into a chaos confidently Oh, myself to blame The sun shines through the pouring rain I say Oh, this time I say Wouldn't have it any other way There it is, the new single from Alison Albrecht. I say is the name yeah, of it. Yeah, I say. Good stuff. I like it a lot. Thank you. So you've been collaborating with your brother. That's the first one. How many have you written together? We've got, um, I would say probably three that we've written that are like fleshed out ideas, and then yeah. a bunch of bunch of bunch of scraps after that. <laughs> is, is your responsibility mostly lyric, or do you contribute music as well? Um, I contribute both. He has yet. He. Um, Hasn't contributed lyrics yet, but... He's we'll not see. the sensitive guy? We'll see. <laughs> well, I would say he absolutely is, but um, he's just never dabbled in songwriting before. So I think just as we continue to maybe collaborate and work together, uh, that's something we can tap into. So, yeah. 
it seems that since the last time you put out an EP, there have been more than three or five songs. You might have enough for a full album from whatever. I mean, you, yeah. you performed, I think, three new ones on I saw you a year ago, and those yeah. star aren't out. One of them I want to bring up because it's it's in my head a lot. I love it. Hurricane is yes. such a great song. I think I was considering playing that one. You should, too. actually. Yeah, I'm planning you're, on you're, it. You're, you're yeah. probably going to make me cry if you do, yes. but I, I just love that one. And well, I, yeah, thank you so much. Does singing your feelings ever become hard? Because, I mean, sometimes you're going to have to do this in front of people, and these are probably, maybe I'm wrong, but that sounds like it's based on something you went through, that one. Well, I think that's my favorite part is um, I think through um, through vulnerability is how relationships are made and how you can, how music, I feel like, really reaches people, I think, without... Um, vulnerability in songwriting. I think vulnerability is what makes songs have such an impact. Um, and that's like my favorite part about it is connecting with others and seeing how um, music moves in other people. So um, I've been writing about my life <laughs> and topics for, um, you know, since I started writing. And I think when I started, I tried to write about things that you know, I didn't know as much about or maybe weren't as personal and it just doesn't like work for me. Um, and I find it isn't hard because I I love to share. I don't know why. That's just like my, <laughs> that's just kind of who I am as a person. I love to share because I um, love connecting with others so much and seeing kind of the ways that it impacts their own lives. Well, what it essentially amounts to is public journaling. I mean, that's what you're doing. You're, you're getting your feelings out about whatever difficult yeah. situation you've been through. And you're then you're, right. you're singing it to us. And like some of us, like me, might sit and go, who is this person she's singing about? And boy, you know, how did that, how did they let go of this fantastic human being? Or I don't know who let go of who, but like I, you start to like personalize yeah. it a little bit. And then you think I've been through that too. That's, that's what happens with that song for me. It's like, yes. I've been through that. Well, and that's what I, I think we've mentioned that before. That's what I love about, um, about songs is, is everyone is their own story and journey that they're on. And, yeah. and songs mean different things to, to different people. There was a song that I had written um, I think I performed it last time. It's called After the End. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it about, um, you know, my first real breakup. And um, someone came up to me after 20 Front Street and told her that um, for her it meant um, grief. And she had just lost a family member and it, like, really impacted her. So that was one of the the first moments I realized, like, oh, wow, people really, um, you know, these songs, even if our experiences aren't quite the same, like, um, these emotions are universal and people really have... Um, you know, can share those experiences. I've been figuring that out in the last year or so. I mean, I've always been a music fan and I'm, I'm more drawn now as an adult, an older adult to the story behind the song and the lyric behind the song than I was as a kid. Like I would sing along to stuff. I had no idea what I was singing along to. <laughs> and then I become you know, a little bit older. Like my, I'm sure you know the song, my Sharona by the knack, right? You've heard it in your lifetime. Yeah. My mom used to love that song. And I, if she ever listened to the lyrics, she would not because that song <laughs> is not a song that moms should like in front of their kids. <laughs> but I was never paying attention to lyrics then. I was just singing along. And now as an adult, I pay way more attention to what's being sung about. And, I'm way more emotional about it for whatever reason. Maybe the pandemic has just brought out this, like, I'm so detached from everybody. I need to feel something, and I'm feeling everything now. You know, there's certain songs I hear on the radio that are hits, and I go, oh, I want to cry. Like, when did that happen? <laughs> I'm, I'm past 50, and now I'm crying at songs on the radio. <laughs> well, I just think that that's the power of music, is um, even in this time where we are um, so physically disconnected, there's things like music that... Um, really bring people together okay now make me cry sing hurricane <laughs> no. do it hurricane oh gosh all right Love this is song. hurricane nelson albrecht's my guest this week on acoustic alternatives time does not move slow just because I can't let go, it keeps on moving Even through the sleepless nights I push the pain off to the side What's really keeping me alive Is masking mixed emotions As I hide Oh, but it's a treacherous climb I know that healing comes with time I take two steps forward Then go ten steps back 
glue broken pieces back together but my heart wants to crack i believe all the rain is gone and my clothes have all dried but my life is still a hurricane and i'm stuck in the eye It's hard to comprehend uncertainty that lies ahead though I'm afraid of the future It'll be alright There's no set of rules or guides to moving on Once the tears have dried But the heart's not yet prepared So hang on tight I'm still battling the treacherous climb and I just wonder how much more time I take two steps forward Then go ten steps back Glue broken pieces back together But my heart wants to crack I believe all the rain is gone And my clothes have all dried But my life is still a hurricane and I'm stuck in the eye But the rain won't fall forevermore Though it feels like drowning in the heat of the storm and the wind will try to blow me away And I feel so weak today I take two steps forward Then go ten steps back Glue broken pieces back together But my heart is still cracked I believe I'll God in my clothes have all dried But my life is still a hurricane And I'm stuck in the eye oh, oh, In the eye oh, oh. Available on the forthcoming album, Alison Albrecht's Greatest Hits, Best Of. That's a great song. Thank I love you so that. Much. That's probably my favorite of your originals, quite honestly. Thank you. It's just so cut wrenchingly beautiful and well well stated. And I'm I'm admiring your songwriting. That's Thank what you. I'm trying to tell you. All it's right. One of my favorites to perform for sure. Might be my favorite to perform. <sighs> okay, we're in a greens. Good. We get along. <laughs> There's been a bit of space between your first EP and your last release. Um, yeah. What do you think from your your first writings will survive your set lists for years to come? I have an idea of my one that would probably. That's a great question. Um, I think Not Alone, which was on my first EP. Yep. Like I said, I wrote that so many years ago, but um, still resonates with me. And I think so many still. Um, not Alone, for sure. Um, I also love start again and jealous thing those two which were off my start again ep i really love those um you gotta yeah. you gotta think about midnight because midnight holds up really midnight. well as well yes true it really does yes, that midnight. that's a song you might want to revisit like when you're i don't know if you're continuing your music career like you're yeah. planning to maybe eventually you get signed to some sort of independent label and they want you to yeah, yeah. come up with a full albums worth of songs and you're like oh i don't really feel like doing you might consider redoing that one just as to modernize it nothing wrong with the way it was but uh, my aunt it's, she, it's her alarm she might be watching this right now she <laughs> says midnight is for alarm it's a she great song up to it every morning. For, for a young songwriter that is a really impressive <laughs> song you. so yeah, i just I like love that one too. keep that one that's yeah. what i'm saying about that, that one's fun to perform also yeah it's a, but that's a band song though isn't it yes. more than a solo song it's i mean yeah. you've, you've done it solo for me but it seems like that one survives better most, most fun with a band for sure yeah for sure for sure um so you've <laughs> not to make you feel 
all that. But last time we got together, you said that you'd, you'd share some demos with me so I could hear what was going on, and you, you didn't. I didn't. But that's okay. I mean, you well, don't. If you don't need my opinion, it's it's here if you want it. But I would love to be, you well, know, part this, of part of your process. The situation was at that time I didn't have <laughs> have a studio or really what I was doing was I was just recording voice memos in my yeah. phone, and then I feel like the world kind of got a little crazy. But it did get a little um, crazy. And then that kind of you know, my whole creative process shifted, um, having this sort of access to, I mean, i I'm not really like, I'm no expert at all. I will leave that to actual engineers and producers, yeah. but like, I know my way around logic a little bit now. So well, you probably have an idea um, what you want it to sound like too. Yes, for sure. And just, um, just being able to like have a DAW to be able to put in ideas is has been really nice. So now that I have that capability, yeah, I'll just share saying, my I, latest. I, stuff. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind being a sounding board for, for you sure. if, if you need one. I'm not pressuring you. I'm just saying. No, that. absolutely. It gives me something to look forward to. Yes, for to, sure. To hear new things. Yeah, I've got some new stuff in the works for sure. Sounds good. Every musician has a list of influences. Quite honestly, I don't know how many of people like to have those influences come through their music. How do you feel about letting your show? Because I kind of hear them, but then again, I don't think I can pigeonhole you to say that you sound like X or Y. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, I, I don't know. I just am always listening to music and um, admire so many other artists. So um, I really hope that um, the influences come through, but that I also have my own kind of unique sound and spin. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I, that's, yeah. I, I don't know what you're doing next as far as like you're, you're going to continue doing singles throughout the year, I assume, while you're busy doing school. Are you are you planning any sort of like full length or EP or is this just kind of like, let's see what happens as I like, have time to do them? Well, that's the ultimate goal is a is an album or EP, but I also just haven't been releasing songs. Because um, you're in school. Because I, well, and just um, like, you mean historic, yeah, I mean school and um, just I haven't been putting out as much material so the goal is i think the reason that i'm you know going for singles is just to get as much new material out there as possible and then um you know hopefully once we have a little bit of a collect once we take a little bit of a pause and we're like okay we're not going to release all these at once um then we'll do an ep but that's my goal is to have um some more singles coming out soon and and hopefully an ep as well so that'd be great will you continue your sunday tradition or is that sort of a as i have time to do it no i want to continue sundays for sure um, I will be back, um, not this Sunday, but the Sunday after, okay. um, and hopefully we'll con continue doing it Sunday since. So definitely go to my Facebook page, which is Allison Albrecht Music um, on Facebook. My name on Facebook is Allison Albrecht, but if you do at, it's at Allison Albrecht Music, and um, that's when I always post the Facebook events, and you'll know when that's going to come back, so... And you have a website as well, which I'm quoted on, which is very nice. Yes. And there's, I think, a session portion of a session we did together on there. Yes. Is, that, is that Allison Albrecht music as well? No, that's just AllisonAlbrecht.com. Very nice. You got the you got the lucky. You didn't have to compete with somebody else for the website. Nope, I got it. And um, my friend Maddie, who is such a talented graphic designer, if any, please check her out. Her name's Madeline Wiggins. She um, actually just redid my website. Yeah. She did such a phenomenal job. So it looks really nice. Definitely yeah. check that out. I was checking it out. It looks really good. Thanks, Maddie. Thanks for helping out my friend oh, Allison. Maddie rocks. She's so cool. Do you feel like doing one more? You yes. don't have to. No, absolutely. And I was going to do a cover, if that's okay with that's you. That's where the influences shine on. Yes, well, I wanted to talk about my influence. I, like, just kind of mm. mentioned, um, this is, I wanted to do a Maggie Rogers tune because awesome. you mentioned Cause I love her. doing her. And I love her, too. Maggie's a huge influence of mine. Um, and then kind of thinking about, um, you know, my influences, influences and, and my own, um, I think Maggie's so great because her songwriting really shines through, but also her songs are so like upbeat and, and lively, which is great. Um, and I love kind of the style of keeping songwriting roots of, you know, Joni Mitchell, Carol King, and, um, kind of putting a modern, um, twist on that. Yeah, for sure. I listen to Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, Carol King. All the I listened to that while I, you know. Tapestry just turned yeah. fifty <laughs> this week or last week. I like know, that. I know. Um, and yeah, so I, I mean, those. That's kind of the core. I feel like of of my music are um, are those those beautiful songs and um, like modern influences is Maggie for sure. Lord um, got a lot of good ones, so I wanted to wanted to play Maggie. <laughs> All right, cool. Nelson <laughs> while we're on the topic of influences. Mm. 
I was walking through icy streams that took my breath away. Moving slowly through westward water over glacial plains and walked off you. And I walked off an old me. Oh me, oh my, I thought it was a dream So it seemed And now breathe deep, how in heaven You and I the same in between Leave me be, how exhaling You and I the same in between Back and forth without thinking of you. Learn to talk and say whatever I wanted to. And I walked off you. And I walked off an old me. Oh, me, oh, my. I thought it was a so it seemed And now breathe deep Oh, in hell You and I the same in between Leave me be How I exhale You and I the same in between Thank you for doing that. Yes, that was Alaska. Alison Albrecht on Acoustic Alternatives. What a fantastic uh, performance today. Great to see you in person. Great to have this chance to chat with you face-to-face, although our faces are blocked by masks and plexiglass. And just, I'm I'm proud to be a supporter of yours because I really believe in you and I can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you so much for having me and just, again, for all your support. You got it. For years to come. Decades, I'm sure. (laughs) <laughs> great to see you but i don't know who's next on acoustic alternatives I'm, a couple weeks from now i'll have somebody else in the studios but uh it's been a pleasure to be with you again and uh, keep checking out what grove studios is doing because i'm not the only one doing podcasts that are music related from the studio so follow their facebook page follow their youtube channel and you'll see what else is happening here at grove studios and thanks to them for allowing me to do this here have a great day <laughs>